click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Let's move on to count because there are a couple of different ways that we can use the count function. Now the count function allows you to count the number of items in a range of cells. So here I have a little table. It has some student names and it has the test score that they've received. And maybe I want to find out how many students I have in this list. Now, this is a fairly short list. It's quite easy for me to very quickly count down. But if I had a very long list, I could use the count function, which is going to do that for me. Now, there is something you have to watch out with with the count function. So if I click in cell G3, I'm going to type in equals count. Open my first bracket. My first argument is value one. What do I want to count? Well, I want to count the number of students. So I'm going to select the range. So if I select the entire range just here, close my bracket and hit enter, I get zero. Now, why is it giving me zero? Let's put a pin in that for a second and try the same thing, but this time using the count a function instead. So I'm going to type in equals count a, open bracket. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Select the range that I want to count. And that time it works. So what is the difference between these two? Well, count will only count cells that contain numbers. And because I chose a range that contains text, that is why it's giving me zero. Now, count A, on the other hand, that formula will count everything. Count all is what it stands for. So it's going to count cells, whether they contain text, numbers or anything else. Now, if I was to uh, redo this formula equals count open bracket, this will work if I select the test scores to count instead. Because those are numbers. So that is a very important distinction to make when you're using count and count A. Now, something else that's really useful for you to have turned on when you're working with formulas is I want you to turn on certain options in the status bar. So your status bar runs all the way across the bottom of Excel underneath where we have all of our different worksheet tabs. Now, if you right click your mouse in this area, you're going to get this customized status bar menu. And what I would suggest that you do is make sure that you have these options with a tick next to them. So where it says average, count, numerical count, minimum, maximum, and sum. Make sure that you toggle those on. So click them to put a tick next to all of them. The reason why I like to have these on, particularly when I'm working with formulas, is that it means I don't actually have to do a formula in order to be able to see the average, the count, the sum, so on and so forth. Because if I have these turned on, if I simply highlight a list of data, so let's do these test scores, can you see what I can see in the status bar at the bottom? It's looking at that range and it's telling me what the average of these numbers are, what the count is, what the numerical count is, what the maximum value is, and also what the sum is. So if somebody down the corridor very quickly wants to know, oh, you know, can you add these test scores together? I don't have to perform a calculation. I can simply highlight them, look in my status bar, and I can see that the sum of those is 415. So really useful little thing to have turned on when you're working with formulas. So with all that said, let's move along to talking about the concept of absolute versus relative referencing. This is invaluable when you're working with formulas. If you don't understand the difference, you're really going to struggle, particularly when you get into more advanced formulas. So I want us to make sure that we have a really good understanding as to what the difference is. So for this example, I have a very simple spreadsheet. I have some employee names listed in column A. I have their departments in column B. I have the number of years that that employee has been at the company in column C. And I have their salary in column D. And what I want to work out here is I want to work out the bonus for these employees. And you can see over at the side here, I have the bonus listed in cell J1. So each employee is going to get a bonus of 3.5% of their salary. So what I want to do is perform a calculation where I work out what 3.5% of the salary is, and that is going to be their bonus. Now, this is a very straightforward calculation. If we type in equals sum, 
open brackets, I basically want to do the, the salary multiplied by, so we want an asterisk in there, the bonus, which is in cell J1. Close the bracket, hit enter, it's now given me the bonus. So that is essentially 3.5% of their salary. Now, what I would want to do here, because I want to work out the bonus for everybody in this list, I don't want to have to go through and add in that formula. I want to be able to pull this down, copy the formula down to make this super quick. But look what happens if I use my autofill handle to copy this down. I'm going to double click to autofill down. You can see I'm getting an error. I'm not getting any details. Now, why is that? Well, if I select one of these cells down here and double click in the cell, it's going to show, show me the cell references that this formula refers to. So I can see currently this sum function is referring to cell D8, which is fine. That's what I want it to do. But it's multiplying by cell J7. And if you take a look at J7, it's highlighted in red in this spreadsheet. That cell is empty. So that is why I'm not getting a result for this particular calculation. So why has Excel done that? Why isn't it referring to the bonus in cell J1? Well, that is because by default, Excel uses relative referencing. So I'm just going to undo uh, and go back to our original formula up here. Now, relative referencing means that when I drag a formula down, Excel changes the or adjusts the cell references. It thinks, OK, she's moving the formula down, so she wants the cell references to also move down one each time. Now, for the salary column that I'm referring to, that's absolutely fine. But when it comes to cell J1, that's not because if I drag down, it's going to move down to cell J2, then J3, then J4. So we need to employ something called absolute referencing in this case to get this formula to work. So I'm going to just delete out everything in here. Let's do this formula again. We're going to say equal sum, open bracket. I want to do cell D2. That is absolutely fine. I can keep that with relative referencing. I want this reference to change as I drag down. I'm going to multiply it by cell J1. Now, I don't want this cell to move as I drag the formula down. I want to lock it so that it always references cell J1. And that is where we make the cell absolute. Now, to do that, you can press the F4 key on your keyboard. And it's worth noting here, you can have relative referencing, which is the default, absolute referencing, which is what we're going to do in a moment. But you can also have mixed referencing. Now, I'm not going to get into mixed referencing in this session because it is slightly more advanced. I'm going to leave that for now. But just be aware that there is a third option. And to make this or sell J1 absolute, let's just press that F4 key you can see that it puts dollar signs in front of the row and the column. Essentially, that locks the row and the column into place. I can now close my bracket, hit enter. And now if I autofill this down by double clicking that autofill handle, you can see that that formula is working. If I go a bit further down and double click to check to make sure it's referring to the correct cells, I can see it is. So it's referring to cell D14, but it's locked to cell J1. So that is the difference between relative and absolute. Relative, the cell references will change as you drag the formula down. Absolute means you're locking it to a specific cell. A very, very important concept to get your head around. Let's just fill out this final column for fun. I want to do the salary plus the bonus. So this is just a very simple sum calculation. I want to do salary um, plus we're going to do bonus just here. Enter. And then I can copy that down like so. All right. So that is the difference between absolute and relative. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.